This episode of Peeps and Lunatics is brought to you by Tweaked Audio. Get awesome headphones, go to tweakedaudio.com and use the coupon code SOUTHGATE to get 30% off, free shipping, and a lifetime warranty. Or you can get there through the link on our website, southgatemediagroup.com. This is Luca Parrish, and you're listening to the Capes and Lunatics podcast. Diggity dink. Hello and welcome to another week of the Nightwing News, episode 94, The Road to 100. I am <laughs> joining me as always, it is. Hello, I'm Kristen. And today we will be discussing Nightwing, The New Order miniseries. My friend of the show, Mr. Cal Higgins. And I'm telling you, there's coke in this solo cup. <laughs> I have not been to a frat party. <laughs> like Cole says, nobody's business what you're drinking on here. I mean, that is true, but it's just... I, I feel like it's a step, red solo cup is a step down from my usual on-point glassware. I, I just always have something Nightwing or Robin. I like, guess red solo cup is kind of robin <laughs> You're recording on location. It's okay. Uh, so yeah, this the mini series was from 2017. Wow. I know. So no. yes, to get us rolling, I actually have some like overarching thoughts and a story. So yes, in 2017, I remember distinctly when I first found out about this Nightwing: The New Order because one, it was. A couple months, I found out about it in May, it was announced, and it was a couple months after they had done that Captain America became a fascist um, sort of thing. Yeah, thank you. So anyway, I'm at my medieval jamboree, which is technically called the International Medieval Congress, but I like to call it the Medieval Jamboree, in Kalamazoo, Michigan, and I'm standing in a parking lot, and I'm talking with other people about comic books, naturally, as one does. And about how I love Nightwing and, you know, they're saying, and then somebody says, oh, did you hear Nightwing's becoming a fascist? And I said, what? I thought that was Captain America's storyline. They're like, no, Nightwing is too. They just announced it today. And I was like, what? And I was devastated. And so I went back to my sketchy dorm room that they were having to stay in. And I immediately Googled it and it popped up and I was like, no, they're making Nightwing a fascist. But then I clicked on the link. And I saw um, that it was a mini series as opposed to being in, I think Captain America went Hydra in his regular book. Um, and then, so I was like, whew, okay, mini series. That means it's basically an Elseworld, so cool. And then I saw that Kyle Higgins was writing it, and then I was like, extra, whew, because I knew that Kyle was a good writer. But more importantly, in this case, that he was a Nightwing fan. <laughs> um, and so I knew it wouldn't just be a sort of character assassination. Like, if I had looked it up and saw that Dan DiDio, or however you say his name, was writing it, I would have sobbed real tears. Uh, but, yeah, I know. I had the quick summary here. It's uh, yeah, For those of you who don't know, Nightwing The New Order is a comic book miniseries published by DC Comics starting in August 2017. The series, written by Cal Higgins and illustrated by Trevor McCarthy, is an Elseworlds story in which the titular character leads a government task force called the Crusaders, hunting metahumans in a bad future. Oh, yeah. Also, yes, right. That ties in. So, okay, so they specifically said it was an Elseworlds, so huzzah. Yeah. Also, it weirdly ties in that he hunt that his metahuman task force is called the Crusaders, and I first found out about it when I was at a medieval history conference. <laughs> And, so oh, it really it, sears it into my brain. <laughs> and also, too, get it? Caped Crusaders? I mean, yes. Also, I may sometimes use a picture of Batman when I kick off my lecture about the Crusades. <laughs> I will neither confirm nor deny. <laughs> of course you do. But, I mean, yeah, I remember this, too. And I, I remember hearing it was like, I knew it was like an Ellsworth thing. But I was like, oh, don't be hurting brands. But, yeah, like you said, I, I heard it was Kyle. And I was like, okay. Yeah, he, you know, he knows right. like, he knows what he's doing. But, yeah, I mean, basically, the the whole thing in the story is just like, what was it? Superman gets mind-controlled, kills Batman. And then there's like a big metahuman battle in Metropolis that lasts like days until 
<laughs> Dick Dick pulls a device. Of course, it was something Bruce had uh, confiscated from somewhere. Yeah, and he basically uh, from Apocalypse. I yeah, think it's Apocalypse, a... of course. Yes, and he uh, turned off the metahuman powers of like what was it ninety some percent of uh, metahumans in the world. Yeah, I mean, it almost feels like an EMP blaster for metahuman powers that it just boom. Shut them off in the area, and that ended the war. Yes, so then my overall theme then is, so on the one hand, I enjoy the series because it's well written, it has nice illustration, and it's a good, it's a good story. And, you know, Dick is a flawed person like we are, and is part is in the right place and he makes some mistakes, but he's also redeemed at the end. But the story also makes me a little sad because Dick is such a flawed person in the beginning. Yeah, but I mean, I, I could, we don't like what he does, but I can almost, I can kind of uh, see it just because you could see the internal struggle. It's like, yeah, he doesn't want to like betray his friends, but it's like, I could see him working to protect people, especially once Bruce dies, he'd be like, well, if they can kill Bruce, who's next? Barbara. Right, and I guess that would, that if we ever asked Kyle anything about it, I think that would be, aside from I just want to know if Jake has any significance or if it's just a random name, which is neither here nor there, is I guess I think that it does, this does really seem to hinge on Bruce being killed by 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 Superman um, in, in particular, because I think... It seems to me that, based on my understanding of the character, that is, of course, you know, influenced by also what I want the character to be, um, that if Bruce had not died, I don't think Dick would have been on the side of... I think he definitely would have been more on Alfred's side, because, you know, Alfred is kind of the voice of, like, should we really be doing this to, pe to people? Uh, and I think if Bruce hadn't died and Bruce was suggesting, hey, maybe we should, you know, zap these powers and put these people in stasis. I feel like if Bruce was saying that, Dick would have said, but what about my friends? And, you know, we can't do this to people. And that's not fair. And so I do think that Bruce really did need to die to get him to that point. Yeah, I think. What, what do you think, Bill? Well, I think one, it's like. If Bruce had, if Bruce was alive, yeah, Dick would have waited for Bruce to pull the trigger on that device. He, you know, he would have left that decision up to Bruce. I mean, and two, I think again, the biggest superhero influence in his life after Bruce is, uh, you know, Superman. I'm sure he was probably like, you know, if they can weaponize Clark, they can weaponize anybody. So yeah, and again, there's a, there was like a big metahuman brawl in Metropolis that they they said lasted what three days or something. So he's like, yeah, enough's enough. Yeah, I just, I guess I feel like if Bruce hadn't died and Bruce was thinking we should do this, I think Dick would have been in the sort of Alfred role of saying a bunch of stuff like we shouldn't take away these people's freedom of choice and that and that kind of stuff. Because, um, I mean, of course, because Dick is a bat, you can see because they're, you know, a little like metahumans. Um, it's, of course, not totally outside the realm of possibility that he would end up leaning this way um that that he does but i think if bruce were around i mean i'm not saying that if bruce was like we're gonna do it dick wouldn't necessarily go along with it but i think he would have said he would have said some of the things that alfred says in, they would add a discussion but, nothing else yeah yeah and he would have had some of those alfred lines of like i see your point but i don't agree with it but i'm just gonna let you do your thing and again, yeah, I think the big catalyst is Bruce's death because I think, even if he's not conscious of it, I think Dick is always like, I can be the shiny, you know, happy guy because, you know, Bruce is always there to make those hard decisions, you know, that maybe no one will agree with. But Bruce was, you know, but once Bruce is dead, I think Dick, you know, Dick's just sitting there thinking, okay, you know, this is all falling on my shoulders now. Um, yeah, there's nobody else. I'm with Bruce dead. I think it, Dick's just like it's, this. All falls to me. I have to be the guy to make these decisions that you know, no one will probably yes. like. But yeah, yes, absolutely. And Alfred fulfills is fulfilling kind of the same role for Dick. 
um, as he is for Bruce, because it's not as though Alfred approves 100% of everything that Bruce does. I mean, actually, to a large extent, a lot of writers like to portray that Alfred really doesn't approve of, really doesn't entirely approve of Bruce being Batman, but... <laughs> Well, but Alfred, Alfred's always like, I, I just hope that, you know, for better for you, sir, you know. Right. Well, and I think it's always much easier. I mean, we're always, if you're a conscientious person, um, it's always much easier for you to forgive other people than it is to forgive yourself. And always much easier to be like, oh, hey. So, you know, it would be, it's easier for Alfred to say, Bruce, you shouldn't punish yourself like that. It's easier for Bruce to say, oh, all of you Robins, I would love it if you could, you know do this thing for a little while and then stop. And I mean, it's a, you know, it was, a, it was a struggle internally for Dick because he not only did he shut, I mean, he shut down Superman and everyone, but again, he, he betrayed his friends, you know, Starfire lost her powers. Look what happened to beast boy. I mean, he got, he, he got stuck in like mid transformation. He's like bait. He's literally like a beast man. You know, he's like, like a walking, talking. What was he like a, a tiger man or something? Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's like, I betrayed my wife, basically. Or yeah. I'm actually not sure if they... I, I don't know if they're married, but they do have a kid, yes. Right, yeah. Who, Corey... Yeah. I guess Corey leaves at some point to be part of the resistance, and, you know, then her son is just, like, resents her for that. Yeah. So I like how it's really narrated by the son. That's cool. And yeah. I also think that that makes an interesting parallel to the whole... Um, when he starts talking about um, this kind of stuff. But anyway, about how, you know, eventually you realize that, you know, your parents aren't as perfect as you thought. And that, of course, really parallels the Dick and Bruce relationship, particularly as later writers, once he starts getting, like, late teens and into the transition to Nightwing. Yeah, and again, too, him and the son, you know, kind of similar to, you know, how him and Bruce may not disagree, you know, you know how Bruce. I mean, make- I would say Dick's going about it in a better way. I mean, he doesn't yeah. fire the kid. <laughs> but again, you have a father figure. Well, li- literally this time it's a father and son, but you have the father figure and the son and, you know, the son's telling the dad, you know, you shouldn't be making some of these decisions and stuff. Um, again, so all of a sudden Dick is cast into Bruce role. Just. Right. It's kind of what happens when you become a dad. I think. I don't know. Let us know, Phil. What are your thoughts, Dad Phil? Yeah, I mean, uh, yeah, this this probably this story probably hit a little differently, you know, since I'm a dad. If I'd read this previously before that, I don't know. But, but yeah, I mean, it's hard. It's like he wants to protect the world, especially for his son, and it's and we see what happens once his son discovers he has powers. You know, Dick's like, no, 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 we're not going to lock you up. Right. Yeah, and of course, and you know. Um, Cyborg gives him some crap about that, like, you're so hypocritical. But, I mean, of course, I feel like almost everyone would be like that. Hello! It seems like daily people come out, they're like, oh, I was against gay people until my child turned out to be gay, and now gay people are okay. Like, oh, okay. (laughs) They're like, I didn't really think sexual harassment was bad until someone I knew was sexually harassed, and now I think it's bad. (laughs) Yeah, I think that's the metaphor Cal was going for. Yeah, it's like those politicians who, like, try to enact laws against gay marriage until they their son or daughter right, yeah yeah and then like oh wait this is I mean my son can't get married to his nice boyfriend oh mm, mm, maybe we should change this exactly <laughs> it also seems and i mean it's fine you know we don't want to you don't want to get bogged down in backstory that um so yeah it wiped out the powers and that included Corey's, but they still got to they still got together afterwards. But then there was some other stuff. Like it didn't just happen immediately after Metropolis. It says his dad's identity was exposed, and then he somebody tried to kill him. So it wasn't like just you know oh we got rid of we got rid of powers that that one time. I mean I think he just did that to stop the fight. But yeah. then this other stuff happened because it kind of snowballed from there. Well, well, yeah, too. They were also like, you know, there were some people they couldn't take their powers away, so they put them in like a deep freeze. Yeah, I mean, that's the most shady stuff right there. Oh, yeah. I mean, I mean, taking people's powers away is also oh, yeah. shady, um, but it's the deep freeze that's really bad. <laughs> and I don't know, like, he has, like, you know, he was working to set this up with uh, Kate Kane, Batwoman, and I was just like, 
I don't know. Did Cal want to go that route? Because Dick and Kate have never been that close to me. I'm, well, they talk about it in there that they're not that close. I think that that was put in kind of because Kate makes the most sense because they talk about it as the president was also, you know, trying to do like it's not like Dick did all of this on his own. He just oh, yeah. kind of, you know, became the the figure the figurehead as they yeah. said. The, the, yeah, and, and Kate kind of makes sense. She was she was military. Her father was a general. Yeah, it makes sense. Yeah, right. Yeah, so because I think Kate is actually higher up um, than D- than Dick is. Yeah, I think Dick Dick's, is like in, in Gotham, and Kate is in DC. Yeah, Dick's kind of like the figurehead. <laughs> He's like the symbol, you know, the, of this whole of the beginning of this whole movement. But he's still willing to, to chase guys down, as we see in the beginning of <laughs> the issue one. Heck yeah, he is. And then, of course, so there are two things that really get Dick to change his mind. His son and poor Alfred, he dies. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. I mean, we see Alfred still alive in the beginning, but yeah, the end of one, he, Dick finds out his son has powers and. Yeah, and then oh, they, come take, they come to take the sun. Yeah, and Alfred, Alfred throws himself in the line of fire. That's, yeah. uh, That's really setting stuff off. Yeah, but I kind of like, you know, it's like, I'm never always the most patient reader, but it's like Cal kind of like gives us a little bit at a time. It's like, oh yeah, Dick shut down the powers. Why did he do that? Well, he kind of kind of gives you, gives you a little bit at a time until, you know, it's not even until like issue two where he's just like, Oh yeah, look at this big fight that was going on in Metropolis. And uh yeah, Dick has set off that weapon to take everyone's powers. Which it seems weird to me. I guess it's just like a generic, you know, take everyone's powers away, you know, quote unquote magic device, you know, plot device. But it's like would it work the same on humans as like, you know, Kryptonians or Tamarinians or uh, look like Martian Manhunter and Miss Martian were there. It would it work the same on everybody? Uh, I mean, I guess that I guess I don't know. Side. I guess it does because that's what's convenient. But oh, yeah, you're right. Right. again, it's dark side. You probably try to. Yeah, I can see him trying to make a weapon to take everyone's powers. Yeah, but I, yeah, I think that you. Yeah, you're right. You can explain that away by being like it's not from it's, Earth. So. It's alien. Yeah, definitely. And wavy. So, all right. Anyway, then the next big thing I enjoy talking about is, can we talk about Tim's amazing dad sweater in issue three? (laughs) 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 Crack me up so much. And look at Tim's got tons of kids, man. Okay, tons is an exaggeration. I think he just has three. (laughs) Hey, man, he's not out there superhero anymore. He's got to do something like past the time yeah i was kind of disappointed that yeah that's like pretty much all we get at tim you know since we got red robin on the cover (laughs) i know and then he's just wearing that amazing sweater also tim looks super old the way that i mean tim is younger than dick but i don't know i feel like the way he drew um he drew him tim looks really super old in here Um, maybe he just looks almost like sick or something i don't know it might just be the hair too, because yeah, yeah, it might be. Yeah, I think his hair is really close cropped, and his face is like really pointy. Yeah, Dick's hair is, you know, letting he's letting it get a little long. You know, he's got some gray in it, but oh yeah, Dick's always got full luscious hair, baby. <laughs> it's his signature. <laughs> it even goes back to his Robin days. Remember, there's that one where Robin gets hit on the head, but he's not injured as badly as he could have been because his full head of hair helped block the blow. <laughs> And I think they, they, I don't know if they purposely did that look for Tim just because at first you, you know, you just see a dad with his kids until Dick shows up and it's like, oh, hey, Tim. Mm-hmm. You're supposed to be like, oh, it's Tim Drake. Oh, my Lord. But the, the death is one thing, but the greatest insult to Bruce, uh, the K, there's like daily tours through the bad K. <laughs> yeah, yeah, which is, which is interesting. Yeah, and of course, because, you know, they made Alfred the executor. Um, of his estate, which on the one hand I see, but also it feels like he should leave it to 
one of the kids because I know they all have dangerous lives, but Alfred's an old man. But uh, whatever, <laughs> it works. But yeah, we see Tim's concern. Oh, and also it was nice to know that Tim was on his side as well. So I think it's kind of like the bats are kind of, sometimes does happen. It's like the bats are on one side and everybody else is on the other. Um, although usually when that happens, it's like the bats are on the right side and everybody else is wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, that's how it is in injustice. <laughs> it's like oh. there's Batman and everyone else who's wrong. <laughs> but yeah, it's just, I mean, I'm glad we saw Tim because it's kind of weird. I mean, I for story purposes, maybe he did it this way, but like, I don't know why Cal didn't include Barbara or even like Damien. Maybe we're pretending Damien doesn't exist. Maybe. <laughs> maybe they were. I'm trying to remember. Wait. No, I think he was back by now. I was going to say, during New 52, they kind of, they killed off Damien for a while and then brought him back. I was trying to remember at what point they brought him back, but I think. Also, back. yeah, do you think Tim's married to Steph? I mean, is oh, yeah. even us hanging there? That's the thing, we never know. No, just like we don't know who Dick married or no, we didn't know Dick the Starfire. Yeah, yeah, I know. I don't know what's up with Bar. I don't know what's up with Barbara. Yeah, I, well, I think that might have just complicated things. Maybe it's, it's like you don't necessarily have an easy slot to put Barbara into. So just yeah, and plus, it's, like this is a this is a story that involves Dick and Corey. This is like kind of a Titans story, like cut out too many unnecessary. Things. You only have six issues. You got a laser yeah, focus. A lot of story for six issues, but yeah, I just would have been curious to see what like what side Barbara took. Right, right. But so now they have Tim. I mean, and Tim saying, you know, but yeah, and Tim says, given the circumstances, it was the right decision. And he's like, okay, thanks, Tim. So. It's like it's good to know that even though he and Tim aren't, you know, BFFs hanging out all the time, at least it's not because it's not because they're, you know, not friends. Yeah, and then he sneaks into the sub 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 basement of the Batcave and gets his stuff, and then boom, his old life came looking for him. I do kind of like Corey's outfit, the Starfire outfit here. It's like very practical. Oh yeah, okay. I thought I remember this. Yeah, the Corey and Dick did, did get married because I remember um, he was saying, you know, they were saying about how uh, Kate wasn't close, but she did come to their wedding. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. Mm. Oh right. Okay. So here's the thing: Lois Lane as a blue. Ring is like, has that been? Did he make that up for this? Has there been hints of that in other places? Yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's like a. Uh, there's like different color. Like there's different uh, lanterns. No, 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 no. No, I know the blue ring thing. No, I mean Lois Lane as a as oh, a as a ring. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. That that's a yeah. That's for this story. Yeah. Okay, because I, I was like, did I miss something here? Or okay, that's just for this story. Yeah, no, I knew that. I knew about all the different. Ring well because a lot of I before I before I quit the internet well not to quit the internet before I quit Tumblr because I couldn't keep up um, I remember seeing things about these and like which bed where like which ring thing you which co ring color ring and I think a lot of people said Dick might be a blue ring because that's the hope one right oh, that's yeah. what yeah because yeah when you first hear from the back you think it's Raven but Raven's not in this yeah right and I guess that was the thing that. Um, like, I get it, but then also still sometimes I'm like, er, because Dick's really good friends with Wally. And, I mean, he and Wally are, like, really obviously not getting along <laughs> um, in this. And that kind of and that kind of made me sad. Um, and so I guess. Although, although Wally I mean, it, wants his speed. Right. But, I mean, I guess it has to be. I mean, yeah, it works for the story, but a part of me wonders, even if Bruce died in this way, would Dick really no. go this route? Um, because he has so many friends that are that are meta. I feel like, I mean, you know, it's all hypothetical. I mean, obviously it's all fictional, so who even cares? But, 
I mean, I enjoy the story and it was very interesting. And, you know, I'm glad that it was Nightwing getting a cool Elseworlds issue for once and not Batman. But I yeah. guess the way I see the characters, I have an easier time imagining that Bruce would do this if Dick got killed by Superman than Dick doing it even though Bruce even though Bruce got killed. Well, I think I don't know if that's part of it too, is they just did this because it is shocking because it is Dick. You know, if you made this right. Bruce where everyone would have been like, Oh yeah, I can see Bruce doing this in a second. Oh yeah. Right. Um but yeah, I, well, again, I think one, it, you know, Dick took these steps because, yeah, one, Bruce did die. But I'm trying to remember, where, did they say anything about a death count on Metropolis? Like if, I mean, if the body started piling up in the, you know. Cash- um, I think they do say some stuff about how, like, crime's going down and stuff like that. Oh, here's another thing, random thing that I like, aside from Tim's amazing dad sweater. I like how Trevor McCarthy got it right and Corey is taller than Dick. Yes, yeah. that's right. That's how it was originally. Well, yeah, because they even get that. Yeah, because like that one uh, flashback panel to their wedding. Yeah, like she's like exactly. that, that, and oh, when they're oh. meeting. Yeah. yeah. Um, and as a woman who rocks the short hair, I do like Corey's really <laughs> short haircut. It doesn't. I mean, I can see how her really intense long hair kind of fits the more sunshiny um cory persona but this kind of fits her and and two when she had power she could afford that long hair now you know when she's hand to hand you know you don't want to like no, that like, long hair is super yeah, heavy i can't even yeah. imagine i didn't want somebody grabbing that i mean that's, things a mile wide a mile long yeah uh, so now we get part of discussion about why they broke up Yeah, because the Titans bring uh, Dick in. Oh, yeah, and there's Cyborg. I guess they can't take his powers away. No, because he's not meta. He's a machine. Yeah, exactly. And I love that quote. And for at least a little while, the band got back together. Because I love using that phrase. We're getting the band back together. Even though it makes me sound like I'm, you know, some 70-year-old dad. But I dig it. <laughs> it's diggity dick. <laughs> course it is diggity dang so yeah so he's asking him you know help you know help me find my son and then he finds out the uh resistance has been uh their headquarters is in lock haven the old prison in bloodhaven boom sneaky sneaky yep like wally says the last place you'd expect i guess uh-huh. But yeah, yeah, there's yeah, Beast Boy saying, uh, yeah, you didn't get stuck mid morph when the blast went off. Oh, yeah. Then he says, plus, you've never had very good taste except for Corey. Ouch, that's a terrible thing. Uh, for <laughs> Gar, you're one to talk. You've had some pretty bad taste. Uh-huh. But I mean, obviously, they're like not really friends right now. So it, of course, is a typical insult. And not only are they hoping, you know, that what's happening with Dick's son will open his eyes, but they're like, not only his body can counteract the effects of the uh, device, so his son could be a cure. Right. Which is pretty convenient for when you're having a change of heart. Mm-hmm. That I but can again, reverse what I've done. But again, too, you know, Corey, you know, his son's 50% alien, too. Exactly. I guess they thought maybe they wouldn't have to worry about it since Corey lost her powers in the blast. What? I mean, that would be my thought. Was they thought maybe he wouldn't get powers because Corey lost hers before he was yeah. born? Wow. Uh, yeah. I was trying to. Because he says in it like I wasn't born. Oh uh, yeah. Metropolis. Well, that probably helped too. <laughs> He wasn't born when the thing went off. Yeah. Right. Yeah, Lois uses the ring to show him what he, uh, what you want more than anything. Wait, is this in number, is this still in number four? Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. And it's like him and Corey getting the band back together. <laughs> 
So yeah, yeah. I mean, I think it is. And again, you know, they could you could do a way more than this if you wanted to like really belabor the point. But you know, you don't have time for that. And comic, like, but it is also a good metaphor. And really, I think it speaks to Kyle being a pretty good writer because he's not even like that old. Um, but this also kind of feels like a really meaningful thing to older people who are, you know, kind of look back on their life and are like, oh man, I did some stuff and I kind of regret it. <laughs> you know, that it's kind of a, it's kind of a regret but about how things kind of get away from you because it kind of snowballed. Yeah. but no, And so it, like when Dick used that blast, his intention was not for this to happen. His intention was to stop that fight. <laughs> Yeah, and again, I'm like, I'm, I was looking just real quick again at the, him talking to Corey, and it's just like maybe he would not have taken this as far as he did if Corey hadn't left, because you know she left. You know, Bruce is gone, and then Corey leaves, and like I said, who knows where Barbara's at? So it's like, right? Yeah. You know, the only angle well, and Alfred moves to Arizona. Exactly, and then Alfred's a out of town so it's like pretty much all his emotional uh support's gone yeah he pretty much gets sucked into becoming a kind of bruce type dude sounds like he's a bit of a workaholic well yeah that and then he, he has a you know he's a single father all of a sudden he's trying to protect this kid so yeah him and him and the titans try to t track down his son But it's kind of a trap because, yeah, it was at the end of four, get ambushed by F Mr. Freeze. Which, again, makes makes sense because, as we see, all saw in uh, Batman Beyond, yes, free, well, most of free survived into the future. Yeah. So, I mean, yeah, I mean, again, I think he, you know, like I said, I can pretty much justify any of this, but uh, yeah, I think Cal was going for shock because again, it's like if you had said this was Bruce, no one would have batted an eye. Everyone was like, "Oh yeah, Bruce would go that far." Right. Well, you know, it's good to. Well, yeah, there are some shocking things in there, like you know, you get the image where Superman heat visions Batman to death by, I uh, kind of looks like frying his brain in the bad cave. That's intense. That's an intense image. Well, that, well, that's the other thing. Like something like this almost kind of happened because yeah. What was it around that uh, infinite crisis? Yeah. Like Max Lord took, like we talked about during the wonder woman episode. Yeah. Max Lord took control of Superman, had him beat Bruce almost, you know, Bruce was pretty close to death. And that's when, you know, Diana tracked down Max Lord and said, how do I free him? He's like, you can't. She, she snapped his neck. Right. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah. So something like that kind of happened. So, I mean, Cal kind of built on something that kind of happened. Yeah. Mm. And then you get this sort of like very lost through time Superman. This kind of reminds me of some of those covers that they had with Bruce, when Bruce was traveling through time. Oh, it was like Caveman, Batman with a little like... <laughs> um, with his uh, flowing... Flowing wolf skin flowing off his back. This kind of reminds me of that. Yeah, we're so often yeah, so Superman like... Oh, yeah. Either trapped in a what well, like a planet or you know, if he gets powerless, yeah, you get yeah, like stuff like this. Right. And so when I like how Superman says, you know, yeah, Batman well, when Jake says Batman had the, the apocalypse tech thing, and Superman says, Yeah, and your dad, Nightwing, is the one who talked about abusing it. And yeah, that feels and that's more that feels like yeah, more line with character. And so then of course that's why they have to have it be something so big like mm -hmm. Bruce gets killed. But when like Jake uses like his powers, yeah, Jake uses his powers to help him all get away. And then when they get back, uh, 
you know, Lock Haven, you know, Beast Boy's like, yeah, you're going to help us take the whole thing apart, right? And, uh, <laughs> and Dick's like, you know, just because, uh, just because the system isn't perfect doesn't mean it all needs to go. People voted for this. They believe it. Well, I mean, and again, I mean, look at it now. I mean, we see what people will vote for. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, well, it was written in 2017, so yeah. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, so just, be, just because people vote for it doesn't mean it's right. Ain't that the truth? Exactly. And then this is a cool cover, the sixth one. I don't know if I'd come to head, but that's a sweet Oh, one. yeah. And Boy of Wonder instead of Boy Wonder. And he's got a Nightwing shirt on. Uh, but yeah, it's really uh, opening six. Door new DC Universe Infinite <laughs> didn't, didn't open up right at the beginning. That's why I took screen. That's why I took screen caps. I have like I know. fifty pictures from these in here. Well, no, yeah, that's so, yeah, yeah. The cover to six is really interesting. Yeah, because it's his son. But yeah, you get all the, like the classic DC characters in the back. Yeah. And it, the way it is, and he's hovering up there, that feels like an homage to somebody else's cover, but it, I can't, like, place it right now. Oh, I see you like the beginning of Six, because, yeah, the, the, it's like a flashback. Jake's watching old footage of Batman and Robin. Yeah, well, in the way Jake is like, I want to help you the way you helped Bruce. I wish I knew how to be as good a Robin as you were, to remind him, yeah, like... yeah. You reminded Bruce to be human, you know. I, I, you know, I want to try to help you remind you to be human. Aww. Exactly. So then he takes Jake back. Oh yeah, because at the end of five, right? Isn't that that he like calls in, calls in his people to? Yeah. He's like, yeah, he's like, you let me and Jake go, and I'll, you know, I'll give you the resistance on a platter. Yeah. Yeah. But also Which you kind of, I like, at first I was thinking, oh, dirty, and then I was like, maybe he has a secret plan. But, like, he really was trying to give the resistance, and I was like, ah, sad. I know. But then, but then Jake was like, no. Yeah, because, I mean, they were, well, they were working with a powerless super, well, Superman's teamed up with Lex Luthor, and, uh, boy, surprise, surprise, guess who gets, guess who betrays them? <laughs> Oh, right, yes, yeah, that, of course, yeah, that felt good, like, oh, yeah, of course, Lex Luthor, as soon as they realize Jake is the cure, and he gets the cure synthesized, then he's like, there'll never be any quality, because Lex always is like, oh, I'm so upset, I'm so smart, but Superman is more of a Superman than me, so like, now Lex is like, I'm gonna give powers to everyone! <laughs> yeah, that, I mean... Which is interesting, that reminds me of sometimes, I mean... I don't. I mean, it's different, of course, because you know people are born with these, or they, you know, yeah. they're from different uh, powers. But sometimes with it, like Lex's thing, that you know, sometimes reminds me a little bit of people who are like, the only way to stop a bad guy with a gun is a good guy with a gun. So guns for everyone. Hey, he's like, the only way to stop a bad human, a bad metahuman, is a good metahuman. So metahuman genes for everyone. So like. You know what makes it more more superpowers? More people who, instead of just punching each other in the face, can punch each other in the face and destroy a, an entire building in a single punch. I'm like eh, that doesn't necessarily seem better. Well, <laughs> well, was that another metaphor too? Kyle's throwing in here. It's like, oh hey, you know it'll stop a bad guy on a shooting rampage. <gasps> Lots of people with guns. Right. Yeah. No, I think yeah. definitely it is. I mean, yeah, it's a very it's a very meaty issue. <laughs> I think if you don't want to see it, you you won't. But yeah, I mean, I think Cal packed some uh, modern. Uh... Oh yeah, yes, I think you're definitely right. Yes, yeah, I mean the hypocrisy thing. I mean, yeah, obviously one, it is indeed just straight up hypocrisy. But yeah. two, it is also yes, very much like politicians are uh, in the modern in the modern world. Well, I mean, honestly, it's probably how politicians have always been, um, and it's also. Yeah, some of this stuff, yeah, because, okay, Lex Luthor is doing this, you're like, oh, snap, Dick, you really are a bad guy if you're on the opposite side 
of Lex Luthor. But then, of course, you realize, oh, shocker, Lex Luthor had some nefarious, uh, nefarious things. But, but yeah, I mean, they managed to give Superman back his powers with Jake's help. But then, uh, no, I like this fight with uh, Dick and uh, Kate at, towards the end, where you know it, you, she's like, "You were supposed to help me, you know, you ne- but you never had the stomach for this." And he, you know, he's like, "No, you had too much of a stomach for this." Yep. Uh, oh yeah, but there's a bomb under Lex's place, and uh, Jake's like saying, "You know, it's gonna take everybody to get, you know, Superman's gonna need help getting rid of that bomb." So. And somehow he like flies them all and almost looks like he has a little force field around him. Maybe. I think that might be part of his powers. But I mean, I know like John Stewart's there. You know, he was working for Kate. And, right. Yeah. Yeah. And of course, yeah. you know, Lois's ring gets stronger the closer it's to. Oh, it. yeah. Maybe that was Lois helping do it. Yeah. That might have been it. Yeah. 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 Because yeah. cause her power gets stronger the closer she is to a Green Lantern ring. So. But yeah, pretty and much those powers at that point. I was helping him just basically throw this whole thing into the air. And then we get after he does it in 2040, I helped change it again. Well, yeah, so I guess 2028 is when Dick set off the device. Yeah, and this is 2040, so. Yep. Mm. But yeah. Tires. Pennyworth Foundation does stuff, but yeah, the pop with with well, like started the power started slowly coming back. Uh, they were still legal for fu- the next five years. Yeah, then funding by the Elver Pennyworth uh, Foundation got the legislation shot down. Kate retires, and then uh, yeah, and I mean they still have like the regulating of powers, so it's like some of what Dick did. You know, seems like the, you know they're pushing it as it was an okay thing to do, not necessarily a bad idea. Yeah, um, but uh, yeah, they sh- yeah, like he puts this woman in charge who we saw it see throughout this mini series. Yeah, he puts her in charge because he knows yeah. he can trust her. And then, oh yeah, see, Corey starts growing her hair back. Yeah, because when he graduates college, she has long hair. Uh, but yeah, but uh, Jake and uh, Dick start working together. Uh, yeah. His dad spent his remaining days teaching kids with powers how to control them. I know, yeah. So apparently Dick's already dead by the time this, this happens. So like, people are not living super long here. Well, at the end, I mean, look, Jake's grown up. He even has like a, I don't know, they don't say how long, how far past it is. But I mean, even Jake's got like a gray streak in his hair. I know, which is kind of ridiculous because his kid's a baby. I know. Well, well how long did he wait to have kids, huh? Oh, man, maybe he's graying prematurely. Oh, did you see what uh, Jake has in his little uh, office there? There's a Shakespeare bust in the... the Shakespeare bust, yeah. The Nightwing poster, Robin. Ooh, Voltron. Some of the stuff from before. Batman, Superman. Who do you think that robot thing is? It looks like... That's Voltron. Yeah, the, yeah, mostly all the pictures we saw before. But yeah, so I guess... Or maybe his little maybe it's a fashion statement because he doesn't really look that old in the face. Maybe it's a fashion statement callback to Uncle Jason. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. Maybe he just yeah, maybe just or he great young, who knows? But yeah, so they you know, eventually he starts he has a he's a great son. Uh, 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 a <laughs> <laughs> That's a boom hiss for sure. And then whoever his wife is, but yes, the most exciting. Okay, not the most exciting part, but yeah, he named his baby Richard. Yep. Aww. And then you see all these kids out there playing meta human basketball. We don't know what the middle name is, but I would like to. I would like to assume it's Alfred. Because Alfred was kind of like a grandkid, a grandfather to uh, Jake. Oh yeah, absolutely. Since Bruce was dead. So yeah, yeah. Like Cal doesn't say, but I just I would like to know how far past twenty forty this is when he has his family. Because yeah, because I mean he was a kid in twenty forty. So 
I know, yeah. And I mean, it has to. Be, I mean, it's minimum ten years, but yeah. it feels more like minimum. It feels like minimum. It's probably 20, 55, 15, oh, year, 15 yeah. years because he's been through college. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, is I feel like they're kind of suggesting to us that he's twelve, but he can't really be twelve. At the oldest, I think he can be as eleven. Because it's 12 years after Metropolis, and he oh, wasn't, yeah. and like his parents weren't married yet or anything. So, I mean, I think he, Jake is really more like 10. Maybe. So, that's at least 12 years to get through college. Then he was saying he was working with Dick because Dick was doing yeah. this. Well, like you said, yeah, he had to go through college. He had to meet this woman who we never find out what her name is. Yeah, and had, you know, at least nine months to have a kid. Yeah, it's, you know. But it still seems, I mean, like, Dick could easily still be alive, but it obviously is very strongly hinting. Well, that's that what I'm not. saying, too. When they say he's, you know, when he says, you know, Dick's dead, I'm assuming it's way more, it's more than 15 years. Right, yeah. So, yeah. All right, the end timeline seems a little bit wonky, but whatevs. <laughs> Again, that's why I don't think he put a year on it. It was just like, hey, you know, whatever you, whatever you want. All right. So again, a lot of this Dick isn't portrayed in the best light. But what did you think? Did you enjoy it? Did you... Yeah, I mean the thing. This is one of those times where. So of course, because I'm like mm -hmm, sad um, yeah. that Dick is kind of a dick um, for a lot of the stuff. It's like uh, makes me makes me sad. But I mean, it's a really solid miniseries. You know, it's oh, yeah. very well written. It's very you know. And I mean, it's a it's a quibble. Obviously, I mean, this person is a fictional care is a fictional character, so we can't really really know. Um, so that's why it's in Elseworlds because yes. the Dick Grayson version that I prefer, even if Superman heat visioned Bruce's brain out, he wouldn't go he wouldn't go this route. He would be upset, but because he has so many meta friends, he would. Um, I'm not saying that he wouldn't use the, I could definitely see him using the, like the meta, the power blaster thing to stop it. Particularly yeah. if that happened like right after Bruce died, but I can't necessarily see him wanting to police metahumans like this and want to put them in stasis. Like the stasis thing is really where I, it doesn't ideally fit my conception um, of Dick Grayson, the Dick Grayson I prefer, but I don't think it fits Kyle's ideal conception of Dick Grayson. That's why this is in Elseworlds. It's supposed to be what if he made a couple really not so hot decisions and, and this is what happened. So yeah, I mean, like, it's really good pacing. It's like, it's one of those things when you, you know, see someone make an argument or less like a good movie. You're like, that's a good movie. It's just not my cup of tea. It's yeah. kind of like that. Um, yeah. That it's it's not my. It is my cup of tea, but it's not my favorite cup of tea. <laughs> yeah, but it's very good. <laughs> I mean, yeah. I mean, I think you needed a writer like Kyle who gets Dick to write this because it's like exactly. Yes, yeah. this is. I mean, this is like a what if. It's like basically dick grayson's worst day and still he still shows restraint like you can't go like full hitler with dick grayson you know maybe with bruce but you can't with dick grayson so i, I like i said i'm just glad yes. someone I'm like Kyle who gets the character who's like yeah he, he would still have doubts no matter what you know even at the end he, he you know he changes his mind and stuff and helps turn it around but absolutely yes yeah yes and that is the yes and that is the other thing is I mean, that's why I didn't even read it and like it is because it was clearly written by someone who likes Dick as a character and cares about the character and doesn't want to assassinate the character. Because, yeah, you could just make him into a total huge jerk. Yes. In this. And, and even though it's an Elseworlds, it still feels true to dick grayson just it's like yeah if dick grayson had made a couple of had made a couple of not so great decisions and all of us do i mean everybody sometimes makes decisions that later you think that wasn't really in keeping with my best self <laughs> um and and that's what a couple of these 
uh, decision decisions are. And yeah. Exactly. So yeah. Yeah. I think, yes, that's, that's the, the, I, it's, I'm so grateful that if they were going to write this, that it was Kyle who wrote it, or I mean, maybe if someone like, you know, Devin Grayson or something had wrote it, someone who really likes Dick as a character, because there are some people that don't really seem to like Dick as a character that it would have been, it might've still been a good story, but I really wouldn't have liked it. So I think it's a testimony to such a good job that Kyle and Trevor did that I actually like it, even though it makes me sad that Dick made these bad choices. So an A. <laughs> and I can't give it an A plus because I'm still sad that Dick made these bad choices. But <laughs> I know. See, she's get, see, she's getting hard, kids. She's say giving it an A instead of an A plus. That's right. I'm a harsh taskmaster. Please, you want to take her class? All right. I have standards. Ah, right. <laughs> there's a drop. I have standards. All right. All right. So, should we tell them what's coming up next, then get out of here? Yes, let's do it. All right, kids. Next week is going to be part three of our our big crossover with all the other DC shows. Uh, so, yes, before you listen to the next episode, go check, go over to Capes and Lunatic Sidekicks, listen to Comic Capers 109, where Lil Hellfire and I kick things off for the Eclipso thing, and then go to Sector 2814, the Green Lantern podcast, episode 17 for part two and Green Lantern Annual 1. And yes, then come back here for part three, where Chris and I are going to cover New T- New Titans Annual Eight and Deathstroke the Terminator Annual Number One. Yes, every Titan gets uh, eclipsed except for one. Hmm, I wonder who that could be—the most capable of Titans. Mm. Yes, well, find out next week. <laughs> yes, and in two weeks, the one one Kristen has been chomping at the bit to get to Batman two thirty two. Demon's Quest. <laughs> That's right. All right, kids. So, yes, yeah, send your thoughts on all that. Email us, capesandlunatics at gmail.com or call the voicemail 614 382 2737. That's 614 38 Capes. And remember to follow Nightwing News on Facebook, Twitter. Uh, find links to all of our social media for all of our various shows, links to this YouTube channel, links to our Patreon, more and more stuff going there. Links to merch all in one place. Uh, it's linktree, L A N K T R dot E E slash Cape State Lunatics. And please remember to support our sponsors, Tweaked Audio and Hunt a Killer. Use the code Southgate for both of those for discounts. And for those of you who like to read, pick up, well, first, Pod Life the Book, Volume One, now digital and paperback, audio version coming soon. And especially fans of this show, you must, I, I order you to go pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder. That's right. It's a new order. Go pick up Dick Grace and Boy Wonder. Uh, learn all about the character of Dick Grace. And you'll learn something new. I promise you. All right. And oh, yes. And you can pick up those on Amazon. And when you do, use the link for Southgate Media Group right down there in the show notes. Help us support this show, the network. And that man in the background pulling the strings, Rob Master Doom Southgate. Make it rain. So says Master Doom. Yeah. Why did your eye drift over to my box? All right, so thank you for joining us. Again, in one week, part three of the Eclipso crossover, New Titans Annual 8, and Death Stroke Terminator Annual 1. And then in two weeks, Batman 232. Demon's Quest, that's going to get ever closer to episode 1. That's right, kids. Lots of great stuff on it. Get them probably officially announced what's coming in 100 at once. Surprise. All right. But enough of that. Until next time, if you join us, same wing time. Same wing channel. Thank <laughs> you.